to wait before having another child. Luckily, I met a family planning advisor at a salon who gave me great advice. I also claim the advantage secure gifts. Now I can space the birth of my children as I want, which secure I decide. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. That we have whilst we are raising our young men. Elder, good morning. Morning, Abby. Yes, it's How good to you have you. I'm good. Well, it's an honor to be here yes, this morning. Yes, and yes, to yes. To share in the company of your audience. Great, <laughs> great, great. I mean, this is the first time you are coming on my show. Usually, yes, we, we deal with issues on medical stuff for children, yeah, for tell. mothers. But I want to do something social because it looks like. When the medical medical part comes and it comes with the social aspect, how do you as mothers, how do you as parents raise our boys and our girls? Thank yeah, you so much. We are largely it. social beings and we have medical conditions. Yes, <laughs> so yeah. the social must actually dominate the it, medical. It, it should, it should, it should, <laughs> it should. Um, also for yes, generally, when we are sister. raising our children, should we differentiate how we bring up our girls and how we bring up our boys? All right, okay. I grew up in a home where my mom had more boys and less girls okay. okay so um you see that her response to both parties were different my dad had the same why because if you look at boys for instance when boys are playing you notice that they keep scores mm -hmm. note very carefully it doesn't often happen that girls play what they call typically in a can in crew in crew yeah and they're keeping scores they don't why? Because women connect and cooperate together through interactions. Now, it's the same thing with the girls. Men and boys, on the other hand, are very driven by competition, the urge to win and to conquer. And so they are always looking to dominate, to be in control and to be in charge. That doesn't make it right, though. So as we grow, we need to now polish the tendency to want to be in control. Otherwise, when you go into a relationship, you want to control the relationship. Okay. You get into marriage, you want to control your wife. Yeah. And nobody is designed by God to be dominated by another. It doesn't matter who they are or what they purport to represent. That's why parents don't dominate their children. You train a child in the way they ought to go. That means that the parent should know the pattern that is laid down for the child. It has nothing to do with career. 
it's got more to do with social relevance, social connection, compliance with character formation, and the relationship with God. Unfortunately, we have created a murky situation, which is messing up a lot of our young people, uh, particularly the boys. the boys. Now, you also realize that a lot of mothers raise the boys without affection. Okay. Now they think boys don't need that affection and they become more affectionate towards the girls. Now the boys grow up and they get into relationships and marriages and it begins to bite because their wives and lovers tell me he's not sensitive. When I'm sick, he doesn't see it. When I'm this, he doesn't feel it. Why? Because the boy grew up. That's that really emotional part wasn't there. Was there, but had been tempered with okay. in a way that is not going to be helpful for society. Okay. So there's a need for us to understand that boys also deserve affection. Much the same way as girls want long for affection. I mean, I remember secondary school those days. If you saw a girl you were interested in her after in Taco or something, you wrote mm -hmm. a letter and you ended affectionately yours, yes. yours affectionately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so parents actually have a very important responsibility. I've always said that dad designs destiny. Okay. Mothers mold manners. Okay. So to be able to work with the two is critical for the boy. Whilst the mother is going to have the opportunity to influence his affectionate part which is the feelings part which is his attitude and values that drive him the father is going to help him to have focus dream and all those kinds of things and it's that's why the partnership is important, important. now unfortunately we are not doing that well and uh, it is beginning to find expression in the kind of boys uh, we, we're yeah, turning out today they're they're a bit more tough and or tougher than what we are comfortable with but what the boys don't realize is that it's not tough and rough when you're dealing with sisters it is tender and trustworthy okay. you see there are two things today the boys are being raised to be tough and rough so they are street behavior so you see him the way he's dressed is rough he's tough he, he uses poor language his diction is very bad his attitude is weird okay. And he thinks that's what makes you a man. And who is teaching those things to them? You know, so tough and rough then becomes what they pick. But truth be told, if you're going to relate with females as a man, you must understand that it's two things, tenderness and trustworthiness. And these two things, you can't negotiate yourself out. Right. If a woman can't trust you, you are finished. If a woman sees you as not tender towards her, I'm being brash and harsh and you have an abrasive tongue that literally cuts people yeah. she's gonna avoid you so how we are raising our boys we've got to relook at it again we are live on facebook check out our sunny 88.7 fm facebook we are live there whatever comment contribution you put to the elder is here to to answer you elder the part about the emotions that mothers don't give is it deliberate or is it society that has made it so this is when i hear people talk about society i i i i, I quibble because and i cringe why because at a certain stage you can fault society for doing something mm -hmm. to an individual mm -hmm. but beyond a certain point the individual is responsible so I, I'm hearing people say, oh, the marriage counseling, when I went for marriage counseling, the counseling crowd, the counselor crowd, you know, he didn't know what he was saying. Mm -hmm. He just rushed us through. So I said, okay, how many years have you been married now? He said, oh, we've been married for 10 years. And I said, okay, why after 10 years are you blaming a counselor? Who came into your life maybe for six months, maximum? In the extreme case, nine months. I mean, how could you build your whole life based on three months, six months, or nine months? What happened before then and what happened after that? Many of us have not invested beyond what we got in counseling. Okay. And so we still fault our counselors and you find that in the same way. So when I meet a young man, you cannot blame your parents for raising you wrong. Because you are at an age, especially from 18, <laughs> if you are part of the adult suffrage, and you can elect a president 
it means that you are a person who is rational, a person whose head is screwed on properly, and one who makes wise, prudent decisions. Okay. Now, why don't we transpose that into our behavior? So, yes, there are things that we miss as young boys, but as we grow, we take ownership of the trajectory of our lives. And that is where responsibility comes in. Okay. I've always maintained that, yes, it is easy to actually build boys, but it's difficult to mend older men. Why? Because if you wait for the man to be broken before you mend him, him, that's tough. Behaviors that have been formed already. Oh, yeah. Already gone. Yeah, it yeah. takes. I mean, it's like concrete. You know, uh, a Chilean poet says, children are a wet cement. Mm -hmm. wow. And when they are, you can easily mold yeah. them along the lines that you determine. But when they become cast concrete, oh boy, you don't have to chip and it hurts them. Definitely. And it tasks you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's an adios task. So parents need to look at it. Otherwise, our boys would only show the negative side of themselves emotionally. So most of the time you see anger and how it is expressed. More in the form of rage. What the accounts call a show. Bufu show, yeah. You know, you see it in these boys and they fly up in tantrums. They are destroying stuff, breaking this, breaking the break. And most of it is is the aggressive hormone in the boy, you know. That That's a, a natural, lot of test. It's a natural tendency. Ah, it's there. I mean that that is the boys have a dominant trait hormone in them that makes them act aggressively. You know, you want to be, hey, hey, hey. I, I remember those days my dad was yeah. <laughs> He never did that to our sisters. So no, no, he would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> Why does he do that? Because the boys will respond. Hey! Uh -huh. They are excited. You see how we carry the boys. We put them on their shoulders, shoulders. and we shake them. And sh we never do that to girls. When the girls are on the shoulder, you are tender towards them. Yeah. You know, and if you look at how we even hold our girls and how we handle our boys. So the boy and the girl, does, they are similar as human beings, but there are differentiations between them. Okay. And parents raising them should be mindful of that as they engage them. You know, talking about that, there's this thing we say, boys should be boys. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that we should just allow them to be the distractive, the troublesome, as their male uh, makeup is? You just let them be the way they are? No, I mean, that's why you are there as a guide. Okay. Adult guide is required in the boy's life. Otherwise, you have to then operate on the theory that says water finds its level. The boy is not water. He's human being. And behaviors are modifiable, and therefore we mold them and, and guide them and show them best practices. So, for instance, if the boy is aggressive, is, is going on discovery, is doing all kinds of things, um, that discovery can be molded and guided, okay. right? Okay. If you don't guide that, his drive to conquer, to win, to be in charge, he now goes online and he wants to conquer people. He wants to break into people's accounts because that he's, he cannot lie fallow. Mm. He has to do something. So parents have a responsibility to ensure that, yes, my son is there. He has this drive. He wants to do this, want to do that. But give him something productive okay. to be engaged with. Okay. Because that same you know, strength and capacity can be directed properly for something Definitely. more productive. Definitely. But if you don't guide it, it then becomes something that is inimical and it will give you destructive, destructive. outcomes. Talking about molding, so then how do we do it? How do we parent them? All right. So what I, I was trying to process myself and the boys I deal with. And one of the things we've told ourselves is, first and foremost, we want to build bold, believable boys. Now, the world is defined largely now as feminine. That is why you see a lot of young boys becoming effeminate because it's attractive and rewarding to be feminine. Now, so the biological boy is not grave danger. It's an endangered species today. I don't want to go into those other nuances of the conversation. I'll leave it there. Now, so if you're a mother raising a boy, if you're a father raising a boy, you must know that from the get-go he's disadvantaged. To raise a boy. To be a boy. Okay. It's not attractive anymore to be a boy. You know, because the future and the current world is skewed towards feminization. 
Now that's why a lot of the times you see it's affirmative action that are gone beyond reasonable lines, if you ask me. I'm raising two daughters and there's no way I would make my daughters have a mindset that there's not enough for everybody. There's enough for everybody. <laughs> there's enough for everybody. I mean, if you talk about resources, there's enough because I see the amount of money that is spent on National Geographic, for instance. I see people going for endangered species somewhere and a polar bear somewhere and the resources that would be my child. That can feed all the poor children in Ghana. But it's going to be used to rescue an animal. animal. So we cannot elevate the value of an animal above human beings. So I can make a case, strong case for that. Now, the second thing we also need to know is this. that You see, boys like to have spaces. They need a space to relax. They need a space to reflect. And they need a space to begin to rediscover stuff. And it happens to older men as well. I know husbands who are craving and crying for space. For space. And their the wives are asking, how much space must I give? <laughs> <laughs> for how long must I leave him alone? <laughs> so, in raising the boy, we must create safe spaces for him. Okay. To find time to rest. Find time to be relaxed. Because, see, otherwise, they become very hyperactive and they are out of control. Yes. They are everywhere. Yes. You know, they are becoming literally nuisance to people. So, they need a space to relax. And then the second thing I wrote here is they need task to try. Okay. Why do they need house a task? Chores. House chores. Responsible, you know, assignments. Responsible. Give them things that they do that they see that they are achieving a result. They are carrying out some duties. Because that's where their creativity, that's where they, they also learn how to be committed. Mm -hmm. If you don't help your boy to have chores, and you graduate the chores, I mean, there were th I remember those days, I wasn't sweeping the compound at a certain age. But when I got to a certain age, I was asked to sweep the compound. And I was not sweeping outside. I started sweeping the inner compound mm -hmm. before my parents allowed me to sweep outside. Because there's a different room for outside, and there's a different room for the bedroom. So what's age specific in terms age of the specific. grooming? We need to, you see, the emerging competences of the boy must be factored into. Okay. Anybody who knows about the Convention on the Rights of the Child, okay, we have our Children's Act also. It talks and recognizes the emerging competences of the child. So children, as they grow, there are things they can do which has a relationship with their age and the stage of life. Okay. Because some of them, their age, they're expected to do certain things. But the stage of life they find themselves, they can't. So you must marry the two, both the age and the stage of development of the child, okay. of okay. this particular boy. Okay. The other thing I wrote here is trust. Why do they need that? Boys, sometimes, you see parents mistrust their boys. <laughs> of course, some are mischievous. Yeah. So we need to help our boys to develop these trustworthy trust. tendencies. And they need you to be there to tell them that I believe in you. I trust you. I so, know you can do this. Uh -huh. I know you can be an honest person. Nice. Of course, when they are dishonest, you also let them know that you're being dishonest. You're being mis I mean, mischievous or disingenuous. The other thing they also need is um, what I call healthy habits. Habits that are not counterproductive to their relationship with other people. It's not a burden to the society. And these are the heart-driven habits. You see, your heart defines your habits. Your heart determines your habits. Now, what is the state of their heart? And you see, when you are heart-driven, you don't need cameras to watch you to behave well. You don't need people to keep their eyes on you to behave all right. So you need your boy to learn that. They also need a community that cares for them. And this is where companions come in. And the companionship will start from parents. Parents. Parents should learn to be companions to their sons. Be the friend to your child. Yeah. It breaks my heart when I hear parents tell me, oh, my boy is not my friend, though. <laughs> but my girl is. My girl is. <laughs> Why so? Because, see, boys don't tend to be generally that relational unless it suits them and it serves their advantage. 
at the but, moment. But girls are very relational on the general score. Okay. So boys, because they are task driven, you relate with them based on what they are interested in. Mm -hmm. So if it's in sports, get interested in the sports and then connect with him. If it's into technology, tech savvy, he's always online, always on <laughs> social media, uh, fidgeting with devices, mm -hmm. stand by him, watch him closely. Hey, mommy, what are you doing here? Can you do this? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't understand what you're no, doing. Just want to Can you show here. me? Uh, so how do you do this? Uh, you don't go there and try to school him and straighten him up because the tendency for many mothers is to go and straighten him up. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to be straightened up yeah. in that way. You connect with him first and then you then have the opportunity to speak to him. Then I also talk about the issue of passion, their dreams and the things that drive them. You know, boys need to aspire for greater heights. We cannot raise them to be mediocre in the way they carry themselves because they are going to engage with a new crop of girls i met a lady recently who has masters in fashion design okay she's not a typical tailor seamstress yeah. fashion designer fashion designer so she's a creative person yeah. she's creating patterns she's uh, having orders abroad and all that imagine the young man who is going to marry her because she's aspiring to marry yeah now, if the guy doesn't have anything to match <laughs> her intelligence, she'll see him as dumb fellow yeah. and abandon him. Because yeah. if you're a dumb fellow, I dump you in the bin. So we need our boys to also rise up to the, to the, to the game. And one of the things that can help them is the purpose, the passion, the drive, the dreams that they have. And this is very, very important. And the last thing I'll talk about is the passion they have. You know, passion and purity, they tend to work together. I like Elizabeth Elliot's writings on passion and purity. Now, a lot of young boys feel that, oh, you can go and game hunt, game hunt, hit on every girl, duh, 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 and you are driven just by your passions. But you see, passions can be pure, can be properly guided and directed. And we need to help our boys to also develop these pure passions so that when they relate with women and ladies, they do so innocently. And not like if you got a girl, you got a game. You know, uh, that kind of thing is, is not adding on. You got a caliber of girls and women who are coming, they are far more sophisticated than your mother was. Yeah. And so if you don't handle yourself appropriately, you will not get into their space. Well, it, um, it's just six minutes at the top of the house. Oh, right? my. How time we just flies. open our phone lines. It's 540 130 So I want to find out, with all you said, it means there's something a mother needs to do, there's something a father needs yeah. to do. But when it comes to single parents, a mother raising boys, yeah. a father raising boys, how do they fill the void? How do they help them to know that in the absence of a mother, in the absence of a father, this is what you need to learn? What tips can they can All guide right. them? So our mothers who are single parents, fathers who are single men raising boys, should not see themselves as a bad case. You know, how you process your present condition is very important. Now, if you see yourself as a disadvantaged person, that's how it's going to turn out. Also, Depending on the circumstance that led you to become a single parent, you may become bitter, angry, frustrated, and the child must not see or experience that. Mm. If you pour your frustration in the child, the child then recycles your pain, your bitterness, your anger, your frustration. So those things said. Now, being a single parent, accept your condition, your state. That you are not in the ideal space you are in an exceptional space exceptional space that exceptional space requires you to do things in an exceptional way i know boys and children who have fathers who buy them presents but they themselves are not present okay. so the mother is almost like a single parent mm. so you see that they do exceptionally so much to be able to meet the needs and yeah. aspirations and, the, and, and whatever um, surrounds the child. Now, the other thing you can also do is to expose them to people okay. who can be models. Okay. Because you see, boys learn, boys for instance, since we are talking about boys, they learn the rudiments of masculinity within the safe circle of 
sensible, spiritual, sane men. Mm. So a mother may try to raise him to be a man, but she can only do that as a woman does it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. And it cannot be like when a man is doing the same, you know, because he sees the dad and he picks the models, he sees the traits. So much the same way the daughter will see that of the mother and do the same. But the mother can actually influence the son in ways he relates with women. Because how we relate with our mothers actually influence and impacts how we relate with other girls and women. So see yourself as a great place of influence and make the impact that you can at that time. Now as they grow, you must now begin to space your relationship and how intimate you get. You know, some mothers still are bathing and dressing in front of these boys at a certain age. They now become very familiar with adult body nudity mm, mm. and they crave that and drives them to pornography. Yeah. And that begins to hurt them even when they become older men. So let mothers be mindful of the extent to which they can expose themselves to their boys. And fathers whose wives have left them and they are raising the boys alone, don't speak ill of your wife into the eardrums of your sons. Because it poisons his attitude and behavior choices towards women. Mm -hmm. Now, society is there to support as much as they are able, but you are ultimately responsible. So you must create allowance for who you feel or you deem fit to impact or influence your son. Otherwise, rogue elements will sit in. And this is where the media, social media, mm -hmm. I'm on a media platform. So there's a good side of the media. There's a not too good side of the media as well. Um, celebrity characters, many of them, you hear them. His girlfriend is expecting. Mm -hmm. If your son feeds on a celebrity whose girlfriend is always expecting, girlfriend is expecting, girlfriend is expecting, your son is going to have girlfriend expecting, expecting, not a wife expecting. <laughs> I get no, it's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a very difficult decision. Yeah. You know, so we need to help them to make wise choices, wise company, and then work worthy. Okay. You know, if they don't do these things, it's going to be very difficult. And they must focus. You see, a lot of the boys are too distracted. And so now you're having so many of them having depression and mm. suicidal thoughts, mm. suicide, what they call suicidal ideation. Yeah. It's not good. It's not good. I was in one school and I heard boy after boy share their story with depression, taking overdose. Mm. And, and I think that too many men are walking alone. I'm on platforms with women. And you see them. They are talking about mentoring. They are talking about leveraging on business. From they are talking about, talking about their health issues. And the ones on the men's platforms, they are talking about Tilapia joints, <laughs> football, <laughs> politics, and we're not even discussing our issues. Our issues, our mental issues. So some of them have actually exited. Okay. But because he was not benefiting and, and me. And one when I look at when I look at that of the women, it was fantastic. Yeah. Tally, more I'm informative. Enjoying. More quite yeah. informative. Yeah. You know, too many men are walking alone. And I'm asking all the men who are on the platform, which boy is looking at you and want to be like you? Want to be like you. One mentor. time I was walking in our estate, and then I just felt some of those men. When I turned, I was this boy. Quick, I said, "Quick, oh yeah." Then he said, "How can we do what you do, enemy?" I'm like, "Really?" So if I was doing the wrong thing, this boy is doing the, the wrong same. thing. Yeah. Now John Maxwell says, if you are oh, taking a walk and nobody is following you, then you are just taking a walk. If you are a leader and nobody follows you, you are just taking a walk. But if somebody follows you, then you are a leader. Which boy are you leading? Which boy is in your company? I see so many adult men don't have any boy looking up to them. But women have. They have their prejudice. Yeah. Yeah. And they are producing after their kind. Also, we're talking about um, depression and all that. So, oh, our time is up. Oh. Also, oh. I need to we'll have to something. do part two. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you don't stop here, my producer will just take us off. So, um, thank you so much. My name is Abit. We'll talk about sponsor. depression later. Yes, we'll talk about it. My sponsor, Secure Pills, and also thank you so much for coming. All those who listen, it's have a good honor. working day and stay blessed. Bye bye. <laughs> You're listening to Soul Music at 88.7 FM.